So we talked about some of our devices, some of our protocols, and some of our address types that correspond with our different app, with our different layers in the OSI model. But these aren't all the different protocols or devices or addresses that you'll encounter. So let's just take a look real quick again at our OSI model, our please do not throw sausage pizza away model. And we'll see how we can identify and apply this to any of our different devices or any of our different uh, protocols. So our first layer, our physical layer, we mentioned that our, we have our cables, our network interface cards, our bits, our electrical impulses, our signals, our wireless radio frequencies. Our physical layer is going to apply to anything that we can touch or feel or hold or um, send or is an electrical signal. We'll put under our physical touch, measure, see, so essentially our devices that are used um, for that manner. Now, our physical devices, while a router is a physical device, our router performs a function which we consider on our layer three. Um, our network interface card, because all it does is it transmits, that, it transmits data as bits and bytes, is going to be why our network interface card is a layer one, rather than our router being a layer one as well. Our router is a layer three and switches are layer twos. So um, let's take a little bit look further and see if we can clarify that a little bit. So now our layer two devices are going to be things that provide point-to-point um, -point connectivity. And really that's all that they're doing is providing connectivity from one point to another point or one point to multiple points. But they, can't, they don't route any data. They don't move data across any different networks. All they're doing is within our same network, they're providing point-to-point -point connectivity. And that's why our data link layer includes things such as our MAC address. We can send a uh, packet, we can send a frame, our, our packets are a layer three, but we can send our frames in our layer two directly to a MAC address, directly to a single point. We can send packets to a switch, and a switch will send it to its direct point. Uh, we can send a packet um, directly to uh, a device over a bridge. So it's that point-to-point -point connectivity that gives us a link, a data link. Next we have our layer three. Our layer three network layer is going to be, again, our IP slash routing. So our IP addressing slash routing is going to fall under our layer three. So our routers, our multi-layer switches, which are layer two and layer three, our layer three switches are all going to be under this layer three network layer. Now, as opposed to our, um, say, our globally route, our global unicast IPv6 addresses, which fall under layer two, because again, they provide that point-to-point -point connectivity rather than having to be uh, routed and changed like our standard IP addresses do as they're traversing our networks, which fall under our layer three network. Now we have our layer four. Now our layer four, our transport, we talked about helps manage and control how our data is being uh, segmented up, how our data is being sent, making sure that our data is getting there if it needs a receipt back that it's got there, uh, and essentially just how managing how we're pushing our data to our endpoint. And our transport is mainly going to be our TCP slash UDP for management and sending of our data. Next we have our layer five, our session layer, and session Layer five session layer is going to provide our connection management. It's going to perform our uh, initiation. It's going to perform our handshake to establish the connection. It's going to provide uh, main, maintaining who can talk when, and it's going to provide uh, our termination of our sessions. So establishing, essentially just overseeing our connection, making sure that uh, our computers are talking when they're supposed to, so we're able to receive the message properly and we're able to establish and terminate connections properly. Next we have our layer six, our presentation layer. Now our presentation layer, again, is going to be formatting data. So we're formatting data so that when we're sending it, we're uh, creating it in a format so that it can be sent over our network, possibly a standardized or an encrypted format. And then when we're receiving it, uh, we're formatting, or we are formatting it so that we can understand it at the application level. We can see it. We can uh, 
we can put it on our computer and display it. Uh, and that's what our uh, presentation layer is going to be doing. And we gave the example of an encryption device as a layer 6 device because it actually takes that data and it formats our data. And then lastly, our layer 7 devices are going to be our different protocols that actually manage how data, uh, how applications are allowed to send and receive over the network. They manage how data is able to uh, create sessions and use resources. So it essentially allows our applications and lets them communicate with our network, such as our internet browsers or sending and receiving our files. So with our layer 7, we have things such as our H uh, applications management. And under this, we included different protocols such as HTTP uh, because it'll, uh, or POP3 or SMTP because those are different protocols which manage how different applications are able to use our network resources, how they're able to send out over our network, and how they're able to receive data and display it for us. So thank you for joining us here today on Cyberry.it. Today we talked a little bit more about our OSI model and how our OSI model applies to different types of devices and protocols. We talked a little bit about some of our example devices and sample protocols and addresses and we identified them as which layer they went under and why they went under that layer. Then we did a quick review of our OSI model and we went through each layer and just gave a quick tip on how to identify that layer and how that uh, how do we decide if a particular device or protocol or port or um, address goes into that layer. So hopefully this information will be useful for you when you're troubleshooting networks or when you're trying to identify what goes in which OSI layer for an exam. And we hope to see you here next time on Cyberry.it.